a number of options available to us and one option here we can see the little curve here is to overlay a normal distribution on this particular histogram so what we'll do is we click that button uh, we have a number of options. We can, we can overlay a, nor a normal distribution, a uniform distribution, an exponential distribution, a Poisson or other curves. For our purposes we're interested in the normal curve. So let's apply that and let's close. And let's just close this plot off and go back to the original output. And what we can actually see here is the normal plot is plotted over the histogram. And there seems to be a pretty good fit for this particular data set. Uh, although there is a number of, I suppose, uh, uh, we can see in this case we, ha we, we have a modal peak here and possibly another peak here. Slight deviations here in relation to normality. Probably a tendency to increase kurtosis. Uh, uh, but in this case, and anyway, we can see that the vast majority, at least 95% of the data set, seems to fit within the normally distributed curve. That's one way we can we can sort of uh, test or well not test but get an idea of the normal the normality of our distribution. But really, what we'll be relying on is we'll be relying on the output of the Shapiro Wilkes statistic. Okay. So I'm just going to close that down now, and I'm going to continue. But this time, what I'm going to look at is uh, in a in a in a later video uh, and in other videos, uh, we test this employee working conditions perception variable. We tested to see whether there is a significant difference between male responses on average and female responses on average, and we used uh, an independent samples t-test to do that. Uh, but once again, the uh, criteria or precondition associated with the independent samples t-test is that the samples have been drawn from reasonably normally distributed populations. So let's let's undertake our analysis of normality of this variable again. So let's go into an analyze descriptive statistics, explore. Uh, this is all set up from from the last analysis. But let's this time let's let's subdivide the employee working conditions perception variable into two groups based on gender okay so actually what we're really looking at is we're going to be looking at the two samples within here uh, based on male responses and female responses and uh, once again the plots that we're going to have is the histograms and the normality plots with tests so let's hit continue and let's hit ok and once again the output window pops up it does the processing for us and we'll get a fair bit of output this time uh, so we have once again we have the case summaries but this time the case summaries is based on the levels of measurement that gen for gen the gender variable uh, you can see for the male variable we have we have the results across here and for the female uh, group within the employees working condition uh, perception variable we have uh, their case summary statistics or their case summaries uh, uh, listed along the bottom row. Uh, and also what we get here is we get the usual descriptive statistics uh, but this time with respect to the male variable or the male uh, sample and the female sample. Okay. So let's go down and let's have a look now at our tests of normality uh, for the male subgroup and the female subgroup. Once again, we're going to rely on the Shapiro-Wilkes statistic. Uh, for the male group, uh, the relative statistics are listed across here. For the female group, the relative statistics are listed across the second row of this subtable labeled Shapiro-Wilkes. Let's consider the males. So for the males, the Shapiro will statistic was 0 0.979, 64 degrees of freedom, with a significance value of 0 0.330, or a p-value of 0 0.330. Once again, the null hypothesis for the Shapiro-Wilkes is one of no difference. That is, that the sample does not significantly deviate from normality. And in this case, to reject that particular position, our significance, our p-value, must be less than 0 0.05. And clearly, the significance value is 0 0.330, which is not less than 0 0.05. And as such, we should proceed under the assumption uh, that it's reasonable to assume that the male sample has been drawn from a population that is normally distributed. With respect to the female sample, we have a test statistic of 0 0.965 with 42 degrees of freedom and a significance value of 0 
225. And once again, we can see that the significance value, or the p-value, is not less than 0 0.05. So there's insufficient uh, evidence to reject the null hypothesis associated with the Shapiro-Wilkes uh, test. And as such, we should probably proceed. We should proceed uh, under the assumption uh, that the female sample was drawn also from a population that is reasonably normally distributed. Uh, I suppose really what we're saying is that we're eliminating the 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 the, the, the chance associated with uh, the sample the sampling error yeah associated with these particular samples. And like in our last test, when we looked at the normality associated with the overall collection of responses for the employee working conditions perception scale, uh, we could actually look at the individual histograms. Uh, one for the male is output here, and one for the female. And like the last time, we could overlay the normal dis uh, 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 normally distributed curve on this particular data set. Uh, let's close that off. Let's close that, and we could do the same for the females. We could overlay a normally distributed curve, and we have this. So we have the two normally distributed curves. Once again, in the male case, this you know the modal value seems to be very high here, uh, which indicates that you know there seems to be a high degree of sort of kurtosis or a greater degree of kurtosis than what would be normally expected for a, a standard or for a normally distributed distribution. And in the female case, we have some peaks above this curve as well. Uh, and I suppose when we look at our p-values, our p-values are getting close to these rejection regions uh, that we typically set. In other words, our significance levels. Uh, but at this case, they're not. They're not. They're not uh, close enough, and they don't exceed them. Uh, so as such, we will continue to assume normality. Okay. I hope that particular video was helpful and will allow you to explore uh, the normality of your samples and whether the samples have been taken from normally distributed populations uh, and in which case uh, will allow you to make a, a, a reasonably informed decision on what test statistic to proceed with, whether that's parametric tests or whether it's non-parametric tests. Uh, okay, so thank you very much uh, for tuning into this particular video, uh, and I'd probably ask you to maybe consider uh, watching some of the other videos in this series. Okay, thank you.